The general area of interest I'm going to be studying are women in campaigning. Let me help you with the difference, Ms. Ferraro, between Iran and the embassy in Lebanon. Let me just say, first of all, that I almost resent Vice President Bush, your patronizing attitude that you have to teach me about foreign policy. I'm going to hone in on the three specifics of this. How do women campaign, and is it effective? Do other women tend to vote for female candidates? And what is the success rate of these female candidates? I think this subject is of an importance to me because I am a woman and tend to side with other female candidates in the last elections. So I would want to know if that theory holds true. What we know about female candidate support is limited since the lower margin of women candidates run versus male. Before 2018, women made up only 20% of Congress. According to political parity, most current research about gender stereotypes is optimistic about voter support for women candidates. At the same time, women candidates continue to navigate gendered terrain when they campaign. The gendered terrain that women face can vary with political party and the type of level of elective office. Moreover, gender intersects with other factors such as race, ethnicity. I was in my late 20s. I was single. I was skinny. I had a lot of blonde hair. I was not what you were supposed to be if you were running for a serious office. It was my first race in 1972. And at that time, I was a young mother. And every time I knocked on doors, people would say, how could you leave your children? When I ran for leadership, the question was, who said she could run? <laughs> I'm amused by that because that only stirred me on more. With the extraordinary challenges ahead, we will not only need to work in diligent cooperation and collaboration, but we will need to test our own imagination. In my first congressional race, my opponent first started calling me just a pretty face, implying that I wasn't qualified for the job. But then, when he chose to do a mailer of me, he used the least attractive picture he could find. He used this technique of demeaning women by their appearance. Sexual harassment in the Missouri legislature for me was a little bit like brushing my teeth every day. There was something said, a joke made, an inappropriate comment made, an awful lot. The Speaker of the House when I asked him at the dais in the chamber what advice he would have for me about helping me get my first bill out of committee, he looked at me and kind of laughed and said, did you bring your knee pads? I had lost a lot of weight and one of my colleagues comes up from behind and grabs my waist and said, don't get too skinny, I like my girls chubby. There's a pecking order from the origins of our country uh, to now that certain men would have certain jobs and they all agreed on what the sequence would be and then we got in line and said, hold on, we've been waiting over 200 years. Democrats won the House on Tuesday night and Republicans added some seats to their Senate majority. Here are some winners and losers. The first winner is Democrats. Yes, Republicans gained seats in the Senate, but Democrats actually took over a chamber of Congress. And any time we see control of Congress change hands, that's a significant night for the party that can do that. Thanks to you, tomorrow will be a new day in America. To break down the strategy that female candidates have, we can tell what are their strengths and weaknesses. According to Political, 125 women were elected to office in 2018. So that is 102 women in the office, 14 women in the Senate, and 19 women elected among governational races. A lot of these women were historical firsts. Take Janet Mills from Maine. She was the first woman elected the governor in the state. Let's look at her platform. According to her website, Mills was running for lower the cost of health care, strengthening education, tackling the opioid crisis, and protecting reproductive rights. One woman in particular has been amongst the social crowd, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. From the Bronx, AOC beat incumbent Joseph Crawley of New York. She was only 28 years old. According to New York Times, Ocasio-Cortez has had more than 57% of the vote with all precincts reporting. So, what are the similarities with these women's success stories? What is the secret to winning campaigns as a woman? 2018 was supposedly the year of the women. A big significance in the women that got elected were the left-leaning Democratic platforms. A left-leaning voter demographic seems to favor women over men in recent elections. According to Washington Post, Democrats won women's vote for Congress by 19 points, 59% voting Democrat and 40% voting Republican. Largest margin seen in the midterm exit polls. 
The last time women voted for Democrats anywhere near that margin was more than 30 years ago. We need to dive down deeper into the voter support for candidates. So how likely is it that a woman will vote for a female candidate? Digging information from QZ, they claim, married white and Latina women were less likely to view their fate as tied to other women. We found that married white women felt disconnected from other women and were less likely to identify as a Democrat and more likely to hold conservative political views. Married women make up about 30% of the electorate, which is a big margin. Oz suggests female politicians to target their messages to the demographics of the audience and it will surely make a difference. They will also make a valid point that a lot of feminist messages of discrimination and sexism may be more compelling to women who shoulder disproportionate levels of inequality, poverty, and job security. This is mainly single divorced black women. From the research I found, female candidates are on one of the rise of popularity amongst the voter base. Because of the recent 2018 election, female politicians are becoming elected faster than ever before. The notion that voters will not vote for female politicians because they are primarily female is becoming almost completely untrue. To bring in to the most voters, these women need to form their platform primarily for the specific voter demographics, especially female voters. Single women tend to side more on the democratic side of things, while married white women tend to side more on Republican ideologies. Depending on the party identification, female candidates need to form their platform based on their voter base. Democratic women need to target more family-based voter issues, while Republican women need to focus on single women issues and minorities. This is what will win elections. Hopefully there will be more female candidates being continuously involved in elections as the time goes on. Considering the 2018 year of the women, it is looking good for future female politicians. fight for change. And that change came tonight. This shift can break through concrete. This is the year of the woman. And Mr. President, ready or not, here we come. Thank you all so much. Thank you.